Welcome to China Focus. I'm Shelley Zhang. Last week, Fitch, one of the three big credit rating agencies, downgraded China's long-term local currency debt from double A minus to A plus. Now, Fitch cited three things they were worried about in China's economy: structural weaknesses within the economy, too much easy credit, and an opaque shadow banking system. Here today to talk about Fitch's downgrade as part of our ongoing series on China's debt problem, Chen Jiefei and Jason Ma. So, what does it mean that Fitch downgraded? It's actually a, a big event because so far,、uh, the, although there have been a lot of speculation about China's debt problem, as illustrated in our previous episodes and widespread commentary on this issue, there have been muted response in、uh, official credit rating agencies like Moody's and Standard and Poor. So on the surface, it's still very calm. However,、uh, this、uh, event that、uh, Fitch downgraded. Uh, really encapsulated、uh, this kind of nervousness. They, they also disclosed at the same time the amount of bad debt that could go the other way、uh, for China's banking system, which could e- even in turn cause more havoc to the economy. Now, for the first time, we knew that debt could total up to 198 percent of GDP, translated into 100 roughly trillion. Yuan, which is the Gagatuan amount. So, how does that compare to the official numbers we get from the Chinese government?、Um, the official number about the Chinese government debt or local debt is a national secret. So, <laughs> I have no idea. There are the different numbers kind of、uh, throwing around, and、uh, generally speaking, people are thinking about the、uh, kind of ten trillion is a number. But this time, you talk about one、uh, hundred trillion. So, that's a huge gap with.、Uh, Well, well, there's some、uh, clarification that's probably in order here.、Uh, the debt we're talking about is the total debts,、uh, including both public and private, that have been taken on by the China state banks.、Mm-hmm. So, ten trillion is the debt owed、uh, by the central government.、Uh, then another thirty percent of GDP, or you can say twenty、uh, twenty trillion. Is owned by local governments, which eventually could be taken over by central government. So there was like forty、uh, trillion、uh, yuan that is owed to, by the central government. The rest of、uh, the, the debt was owed by the banks to the private sector. Yeah, but I have to kind of emphasize that all these numbers are some kind of people just derived from different channels. There's no way for you to、so、get it. So it's an estimate. It's estimate. I mean, even bad, worse than estimated, because、uh, you know clearly Chinese government.、Uh, Prohibit the Chinese、uh, local government to directly borrow money. They have to use some、uh, vehicle, like a finance vehicle. Almost every、uh, level of Chinese government have their financial vehicle company. The、kind of、uh, th- they use that company to borrow money. Sometimes the company is a joint venture with private. And so basically, it's a very mixed picture, and、uh, you. Even don't know whether some money owned by the local government or by some kind of private.、Uh, I, I think that's where、uh, the value of these new estimates、uh, put out by Fitch come into play. It really give us some、uh, ballpark number or some kind of measure to encapsulate the kind of the state of the affairs in the Chinese banking sector. Because previous,、uh, previously,、uh, when, it, when we were doing our program, I quoted. Uh, China's prominent economist estimate, Wu Jinlian, he put a number at 60 percent of GDP, which is far cry from 198 or 200 percent. So this is really a shocking news、uh, to a lot of people, and it's consistent with a lot of people's conception and confirming a lot of people's、uh, anticipation that something bad is going on in China's banking system. Well, let me ask about one of the things that、uh, Fitch brought up, which is this idea of this shadow banking system going on. It sounds Kind of mysterious. What does it mean, shadow banking? It's just kind of some long、um, process beyond the normal official、uh, banking system.、Uh, we know、uh, Chinese、uh, kind of a bank.、Uh, most of them owned by the Chinese government. They don't really want to carry a lot of risk business, and so they are very risky, strict about who they give loans. Like they only give some local government or state、uh, so、run、uh, enterprises. Run enterprises. For some smaller. Businessmen. I mean, they have really difficult to get money、uh, from the normal banking system. But meanwhile, Chinese save a lot of、uh, kind of money in our saving account. So w- what is happening is those、uh, kind of media small kind of business、uh, they build some kind of uh, uh, institute. They they kind of directly borrow money from the、uh, savers. And but of course the bank. 
the official bank is the middleman here. And basically, for example, I know my friend, he right now is buying something he called at a personal finance product, which is indeed is something middled by a bank, but uh, really kind of, uh, he have to put uh, like 1 million RMB of his personal saving in uh, account. Every year they promise give him 10% of return. That's so, that's a huge return. Yeah, that's he said that's not, yeah. he said that's really? not. I mean, he said yeah, it, uh, what, what Jason described exactly the cause of so much as that in the West, because it's almost like what you described, a replay of the uh, right. uh, 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 housing bubble in the United States. I, I think what I heard, what I found out about this banking system came about only in the last two or three years. When the government started tightening up the speaker of the uh, money flowing to banking because they put out of restrictions. So banks could not easily lend out money to local government for real estate projects. So they said, okay, now let me, as you described, serve as a bridge between the depositors mm -hmm. who are crying out for higher return because re return is so paltry and those people at the local government who still want to build their showpiece projects. So they developed this kind of derivative product, investment vehicle, uh, officially known as um, wealth management products. So they put, uh, they take money deposit from the investors into the pockets of local developers who usually are government officials. So banks are the middlemen. They are earning the spread, but the, the promise return are unexpectedly high. Uh, the yield is very high, like 10%, 12%. So, uh, so eventually this- 10% is a yeah. low end. The, the game runs low like- end these yeah. But right. exactly. 10% is like super impossible. high for- Impossible, yeah. three, three not sustainable. Return. So yeah. so this is the reason it's constantly considered, I mean, it's a risk of business. I mean, indeed, uh, sometimes they might, <laughs> Friends told me he didn't choose those 30% of return product because he thinks that's risky. So he chose the safer 10%. I said 10% is risky enough. It's just because right now China, every part of China is grow fast, especially those real estate market. Mm -hmm. So they kind of the housing market increase as crazy. So they can sustain this 10% for the past three years. But uh, so more and more people begin to put money in it. Gradually, it's probably transfer from an investment vehicle to a Ponzi ski kind yeah, of a a Ponzi situation. Ski. A Ponzi I mean, scheme. basically it's a, this now that will transfer some money from an investment to a Ponzi ski. At that moment, if this, uh, there is a huge scale of Ponzi ski kind of thing. I think you yeah. probably are obligated to tell your story, your friend's story of Madoff, you know, really. <laughs> That, uh, the, but, beware of it, the time it might be coming soon, the time it might come soon that it, right, but you have to throw out well, let me ask, to isn't cash in it, all the investments. If the bank is acting as the middleman in this mm -hmm. you know, kind of transaction, is this regulated by the banking industry in China? No, it's not. It's actually, that's why it's called shadow banking. It's even called off balance sheet financing. So those debts will not appear as debts uh, in the companies, in the bank's uh, financial books. In accounting, it's not even assets or, or debts to them, even though the banks are middlemen selling and buying assets. Right. So they are they are uh, like derivative products in the United States a couple of years ago. Nobody would be able to see it. That's why I found it very encouraging that Fitch somehow gave us some estimate about how large the right. size of this hidden assets and debt. Right. So if you know that ten percent, you know every year ten percent, thirty percent that becomes unsustainable, what is gonna happen? Right, I guess definitely you will see, uh, this is happening all the time in China. I mean, sometimes a local group of people kind of uh, uh, stalk a, a company because uh, the company cannot uh, kind of keep their promise to return or the money they own. And uh, so in the future, this kind of thing will be more and more. And uh, of course, I mean, um, because of the Chinese economy are still kind of growing very fast. And also because the uh, uh, Chinese financial system is still isolated in that country. So financially, I don't think this will affect uh, the, in the world global financial system as the US banking system did uh, in 2008. Mm -hmm. But uh, this, if something happened like this happened, a like crash in China, the GDP over there will just kind of probably reduce to zero and then all the global kind of construction materials like uh, Australian, Brazil, all these kind of country depends on this export of these raw materials will be hit very hard. And of course, the US export to China will also be hit. Uh, that's definitely have a very significant <coughs> kind of impact to the world. Anyway, China is the second largest economy in the world. Yeah. So, I mean, it seemed like when Fitch came out with this 
uh, downgrade. It was reported widely in the media, right. but it seemed like the market didn't really react to it. Because the market had already sensed it. It's already impounded in the, in the stock price. People widely anticipated. However, uh, Fitch was the first to stop, uh, come forward, uh, step up to the plate, and give us some estimate. And the size of the shadow banking is huge, unexpectedly. I thought it would be only an amount of $10 trillion. As, it, as uh, we look at the report, half of the private debt that amounts to $30 billion. A uh, 30 trillion would be private sector banking uh, debt, uh, which is uncontrolled by the government. So this is really like a time bomb that could uh, have a lot of uh, power, uh, working like a, a weapon of mass destruction. So let me ask, like, if this kind of bomb goes off, who is going to be left kind of holding the bill? Like, oh, you know? my friend, the people like my friend. So basically, he do have <laughs> one million of his personal saving in this kind of vehicle. Uh, but uh, but generally speaking, it's uh, kind of all the people who right now invest in China uh, may have some kind of issue because right now China did print a lot of money. He this kind of talking about uh, every year the amount of money they put in the market is like uh, 135 percent of their GDP, and uh, they accumulate so much money over there, and uh, that potentially can really in the long term reduce uh, the Chinese uh, currency value. And so a lot of the people invest in China right now is facing this kind of risk. Yeah, the significance of this downgrade is manifold, not just about the downgrade itself, but also the the data set and the, some kind of intermediate result the share of the public that put Chinese economy into perspective. For instance, a Fitch shared with the public a chart that shows the GDP growth and bank lending growth over the 10 years in China in a by chart format side by side. As we can see on the screen, uh, the, uh, in the last, each of the last 10 years, the growth in uh, lending and credit uh, always exceeded that of GDP. Even the GDP growth has already been remarkable. And that, in econo economic terms, is a taboo. That means uh, the credit is too easy, and eventually somebody have to either foot the bill or the system, as happened in the United States and the West, would collapse. Right, I guess basically, uh I think Chinese government will make sure Chinese people pay the bill. Well, I was going to ask if the government was going to step in here. I mean, basically, uh, all the solution is the printing more money and the inflation using inflation to solve the problem. I mean, it's uh, already happening. I mean, in China, in the kind of just kind of later this year and uh, early this year, uh, late last year, the real estate market. Uh, and they are very risky kind of rule, still kind of growing like crazy. Mm -hmm. So, so it's just a reflection of the easy money is floating everywhere, really boost the uh, kind of housing market over there. Yeah, I think th th that's also dangerous. And another uh, uh, very uh, prominent issue that come uh, uh, emerge from this is this time may be different because shadow banking, because the shadow banking works like a pound like scheme. So some some people will be really hurt. Some people will lose. Their shirt. Uh, so that's why I said you have the obligation to call your friend, said probably it's time to sell because you're late, uh, you're late. No, no, what, I guess. What should, <laughs> well, what should people be watching for? Uh, it's just like a go back to my friend. I mean, I told him, <laughs> but he said, uh, I don't think so. So it's always like this. Mm. When you are making money, when you are seeing Chinese GDP is growing like 10%, mm. uh, 8% uh, at least uh, every year, and uh, you just don't believe anything bad will happen soon. You know, you, you think you are the person who will jump kind of out of the boat before we sink, mm -hmm. but uh, a lot of time it kind of just sink with you. Well, as a rule of thumb, I would uh, advise people to heed this advice that when things get too good to be true, uh, avoid it. Seems prudent. <laughs> All right, thank you both for joining us today to talk about this issue. And thanks for watching. We'd love to hear what you think. Uh, you can email us at the screen on the uh, email address below or uh, leave us a YouTube comment. Thanks for watching.